So here we have a case of acute lung injury. And from low power, what you can see is that this really doesn't look like lung anymore. Uh, I might be able to even trick you into thinking a spleen or some kind of other uh, hematopoietic organ because it's got so much inflammation and hemorrhage in it. Um, but indeed, this is lung. And so this is acute lung injury. This is very early on in the course. And this is what we would also call diffuse alveolar damage. Uh, this is just early on. And you'll notice that all the alveolar spaces are basically filled with this pink material. And if you were to go down to higher magnification and take a look around, what you see is that there is a lot of inflammation present. And so in some of these areas, we can see that there's lots of neutrophils. Uh, and in addition, there's this pink substance within the alveolar spaces. Uh, and this pink substance is what forms the uh, barrier on the alveolar walls to the oxygen diffusion. So what that is is actually protein left over from dead and dying cells, uh, bacteria, uh, lots of nasty stuff that then thickens and coagulates within the alveolar spaces and sticks to these walls. Uh, so later on when you see the uh, hyaline membranes that are so classically described in uh, acute lung injury or diffuse alveolar damage, that's what it's actually made of. Now most of the time we don't see that. What we see is something that looks like this. Um, because the patient comes to our attention early on in the course of a disease before those hyaline membranes have formed. Uh, but you can see within this alveolar space that you have this thick eosinophilic material uh, composed of proteins and inflammatory cells that then will later organize into the hyaline membranes that you can see uh, in the textbooks, so to speak. Um, so this is a case of diffuse alveolar damage or acute lung injury. This is early on in the course, uh, leading to hyaline membrane formation within the alveolar walls.